We're going big budget here. Bye, honey. I'm gonna celebrate American independence. Big day today. Today is a travel day. It took me a long time to realize that I didn't have to judge myself if my brain was attacking me. It's just showing up for the meditation, you know? And once you notice that, to just bring it back to the present, bring it back to the breath without judging yourself for your mind wandering off because that's what it does. So people who think like, I can't meditate my mind just runs too quickly, I can't sit still. That's actually an argument for why you do need to meditate, because <clears throat> you need to develop mastery over that. And some days I can just drop in and like be totally present and time fades away and it seems like 20 minutes goes in an instant. Today, it felt, it felt like 40 minutes. So people always ask me, how do you eat when you're on the road, when you're traveling? And frankly, I think most people overthink this. Most domestic flights are only a couple hours, so I don't need to eat on the airplane. Uh, in a pinch, I can get bananas and nuts in any airport. Um, and that's perfectly fine to tie me over for a couple hours. If I'm flying to New York, like a five or six hour flight, maybe I'll bring a little bit more, but I'm flying internationally today. Uh, even though they'll serve me a vegan meal on the plane, it's probably not enough food for me and I don't know exactly what they're gonna give me, so um, I make my own food to bring on the plane. So today, I'm gonna be bringing sandwiches. These are avocado sandwiches, I made five of them. Uh, avocado, lettuce, sprouts, mustard, a little bit of veg veginase on them. How many do I have? I think I have five, right? So five <laughs> avocado sandwiches which I think will be more than enough. Some barucas, yeah. baru nuts, courtesy of my friend Darren. These are awesome. Um, I always bring bananas wherever I go. And then just some trail mix. Goji berries, longan fruit, walnuts, and pine nuts. So two of these, an apple. So I think <laughs> this will tie me over uh, when in doubt. So I'm gonna bring this on the plane. All right, let's hit the road. Let's do it. Oh, bye honey. Hold down the house. Be a good girl. So I've been traveling a ton. This is my second overseas adventure in a month. I love everything about flying. People are like, oh, the airports and the hassle and all of that, but I think it's the most amazing thing that we can do. Air travel is the closest thing to time travel that we have. And I get so excited every time I have an opportunity to get on a plane. And as I was getting ready this morning and packing up, I was reflecting on 2008 when Julie and I were just absolutely broke. We didn't know how we were gonna make it. We were on the precipice of losing our house. We, could, we couldn't really pay our bills. But somehow we were able to pull together with the help of, of friends and family, the budget for me to participate in Ultraman, my first big ultra endurance race. And I'll never forget when Julie took me to the airport to drop me off for that experience, like we just both like hugged on the curb when she dropped me off. 
and we were like bawling like it was so emotional because I knew and I think she knew in that moment that on a symbolic level the fact that I was going to do this race was setting in motion something we didn't know what but something that would ultimately shift things for us it's this weird crazy spiritual equation that I talk about in my book that when your heart is true when your spirit is true that ultimately the universe will conspire to support you and that doesn't mean it's going to be overnight it doesn't mean it's going to look like the way you want it to look and it's just crazy that 10 years later I mean it took a decade but that 10 years later here I am going to Dublin and London getting paid <laughs> you know to go it makes no sense none of it makes logical sense so what does that mean well I think it means that if you have a dream or you have a big goal that you should go for it life is so short it's so precious it's so easy to just fall into our routines and get into a rut and then we become myopic, almost like we're living blinders and we can't see outside the box that we've created for ourselves. So we're in Venice right now. We just passed the street that I lived on when I first moved to Los Angeles, Marine Street. That's where I bottomed out on drugs and alcohol. It's like the life I was living was so different than now. So one of my favorite things to do before getting on an airplane is come down to Venice, park at the beach, go for a run, jump in the ocean, and then change into what I'm gonna wear on the plane and then head to the airport like totally refreshed. So I get a workout in, I get a little uh, salt water on the skin. Because I'm gonna be out of the country on July 4th, I'm gonna miss Independence Day in America. I'm gonna celebrate. American independence. My, my stars and stripes running shorts. All right, good run, really quick. Oh, it's so nice to do that. Reese, did you, thank you for arranging for the hair and makeup trailer. <laughs> We're going big budget here. We got a hair and makeup trailer, full production, crane, drones, the whole thing. It's great to derive inspiration from superstars, but what's most important is that you choose the right path, the right goal for you. Not everybody can be LeBron James or even Des Linden, who I just had on the podcast, but we all have something special that makes us uniquely who we are. And I think and believe and feel strongly that our purpose is to really express that because we need everybody to be more of who they really are. And one of the interesting things that, that came up in my podcast with Des, which just went up last night, is that despite her remarkable storied career, two-time Olympian, uh, incredible marathoner, who's been on the scene in track and field and, and long distance running for a long time, she had never won a major marathon. She'd been to two Olympics in the marathon, but she still had yet to win a big marathon and her goal had always been to win Boston and every year she'd go and she'd go and she'd never win. She got close, she got second one year by just a hair. Uh, 
but she kept at it. She kept showing up. And this past spring in April, she was able to win that race finally after I don't know how many attempts. We can learn that there is value in setting big goals and no matter what the obstacles are that you face on a daily basis and no matter how many times you get kicked down, how many times it's two steps back for every step forward, that you just keep showing up and keep showing up and keep showing up. How do you know that you're supposed to do an Ironman? How do you know that you're supposed to be a millionaire? Um, I think a lot of people are setting those goals reactively without that kind of internal inquiry that's required to figure out what is the right or best goal for you. Can you show up when everything is stacked against you? Can you show up when you don't feel like showing up? And that's kind of what today is about, like flying back to Europe. I mean, it's fun, it's exciting. This is what I do for a living, which is shocking and unbelievable because I would do it for free. Uh, but it's time away from my family. There is sacrifice involved and I'm devoted to spreading this message of health and vitality and sobriety and, um, and personal expression. And I have an opportunity to do that, so I'm showing up for it. Just keep showing up. All right, peace. All right, peace, brother. Thanks, buddy. Yeah.